is Crystal Weaver. I'm originally from St. Charles, Missouri, and I'm a music therapist at the SLU Cancer Center. It's kind of interesting. People think that music therapy is a relatively new discipline, I think because it's gaining more popularity now than it ever has before, but it actually started just at the end of World War II. Um, it began in veterans hospitals, in VA hospitals. They actually had amateur and professional musicians post-World War II in the early 1950s come into the VA hospitals and play for the soldiers who were experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder and also different physical injuries from World War II, from being in battle. And they found that the music that these musicians were playing was very calm and relaxing to them. It was very comforting to these veterans. And so that's how the discipline of music therapy actually formally began here in the United States. It was interesting, though, that they very quickly learned that these musicians who were coming into the VA hospitals that they needed to have some more training with psychology and anatomy and physiology and different counseling theories and techniques and so that's how the discipline of music therapy actually started. The first university to have a music therapy degree was Michigan State and they're still around to this day and now there's over 71 universities in the United States that you can get a degree in music therapy at. So the music therapy program was created at the Sleuth Cancer Center through a kind of a long chain of events. Initially, the dean of the School of Medicine wanted me to put together a multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary cancer pain uh, study group. Uh, and part of that study group, in addition to um, chaplains uh, and medical oncologists uh, and physiologists, pharmacologists, and surgeons, included uh, the community education director for the symphony, Mark Thayer. Uh, and Mark really uh, started to talk about the fact that music therapy has a real role in, uh, in the management of patients with all kinds of illnesses, but especially we brought this into the arena of cancer care. So with Mark's encouragement, we then got interested in the program at University of Pittsburgh uh, and really started to study what they had done. Uh, and then, lo and behold, we found Crystal Weaver, uh, who was available, and two years ago, we um, were able to sign her on as our music therapist. I've, I've played a few times in the infusion center um, while, while patients have been there, and that's a really humbling experience, because I've, you know, I've spent a long time playing in front of large audiences, um, you know, venues, and bars, and things like that, and to play in front of um, people who are receiving treatments, you know, these chemicals are kind of getting into their bodies and trying to purge this, this you know, insidious disease inside of them, but also along the way it's just wreaking havoc on their insides. And so it's your job, it's kind of sobering, but it's also really uplifting to be able to get in there and provide them with something to attach onto that doesn't have to do with pain, it doesn't have to do with, you know, agony or anxiety. And they can kind of just disappear into whatever you're playing if they decide to listen. And that's, that's really a powerful thing uh, for them and for me. Uh, it's a real honor and I'm glad to be able to do it. Being in the infusion room is a really cool thing. Um, just sitting there playing the piano and duets with Tracy. It's, it's just fun to be in the room. Um, a lot of them are not in a very good mood when they come in, but when we like start playing music, then we see like their ears perk up or they start to smile. Or when we came and played Christmas music, they all sang along or started like clapping while we were playing. Um, so that was nice. Just like I said before, like the reason why I love music so much is because it's a way for me to de-stress. It's a way for me to like have joy and have passion. And so when we play for those patients, I really hope that I can do the same thing for them when we play. Um, and just bringing a smile to their face is some, like, worth it, worth the whole time that we practice and come and play for them. It's very important that we do research in music therapy. A lot of people credit music for making them feel more calm and more comfortable and for actually also on the other end of the spectrum giving them more energy and rejuvenating them and motivating them and elevating their mood at times. But we need to have that research so that we can have an evidence-based practice so that we can actually show with proof why the music therapy services are working, not just here at the Cancer Center, but for any population that music therapists work with. 
So at the SLU Cancer Center, we're extremely dedicated to doing research in the field of music therapy. We have two research programs that we're pursuing. One is uh, pretty far along, and that is looking at the intervention of music therapy in the infusion center. So patients that are undergoing chemotherapy, how does a music therapy intervention change some measurable physiological parameters? And then the other program that we're getting ready to start is to look at the music therapy intervention in the perioperative period. So how does a music therapy intervention uh, cause an improvement in the patient experience around surgery? And in fact, we, we again have objective criteria that we can measure that can measure the patient response to the therapy. There was one patient I saw when I first just started working here. And before I started working here, I worked um, for eight years in hospice before coming to the SLU Cancer Center as a music therapist. And so when I was first here, I was kind of trying to find my way a little bit. Hospice just solely looks at palliative care and it is solely for individuals who have a terminal diagnosis where a cancer center focuses on the entire spectrum of somebody's cancer diagnosis. And so I was not used to seeing patients right after they had come out of surgery and were recovering from surgery. And so I was trying to find my way a little bit and I ended up seeing this lady who had just had uh, cancer for on her in her mouth and on her tongue and she couldn't speak anymore. And so I went to go see her and she just had tears streaming down her face because she was just so anxious and so upset and in so much pain in the hospital. And there was nothing that could be done to kind of lower her anxiety and make her feel more comfortable. And so I went in and I asked her um, if she wanted to hear any music. I told her that I was a music therapist and I worked for her physician. And the reason that I was there was to try to make her more comfortable and more relaxed. And as she's crying, she wrote down on a piece of paper since she couldn't say anything, she just wrote yes with an explanation point. And so I pulled up a chair next to her, I took out my guitar, I started playing some music for her, I asked her what she liked, and you know, she said spiritual music, and so I really worked that into the session. And after just 10 minutes, she had completely fallen asleep and was completely relaxed, and she didn't cry anymore. And the, every day she was in the hospital, she looked forward to having the music therapy sessions. And then when she came back for, to get her chemotherapy treatments after she had recovered from her surgery, she still requested the music therapy services and also requested that we did make some recorded music for her so she could have that in radiation therapy as well. And a year later, she's doing better you know, she's still with us, she's still present, she can speak again, and she really credits the music therapy for helping her through the entire experience. And if there is ever a need for someone to look into music therapy for, you know, their, their son who's autistic or a relative who has someone who is in the dying, dying process or a friend that you know that needs tutoring, um, the St. Louis Music Therapy Association has a website, stlmta.com, and you can go to that website and find resources to help you refer to a music therapist. It'll be well worth your time, and I know that whatever means you require of music therapy, that you will be pleasantly surprised with the results. Mm -hmm.